All right, welcome back. It's still with the breakfast on Plus TV Africa as we discuss politics and the issue of power shift. Senate and human rights activist Shea Hussani says it is an obligation for the ruling party that is the All Progressives Congress to return presidency to the southern part of Nigeria in 2023. Now, the former federal lawmaker also disclosed that the opposition People's Democratic Party may not strictly consider zoning the presidency as it will be more concerned about taking power from the APC. Now, Sani made this statement in an interview while responding to the lingering feud over the rotation of power between the North and the South. According to the rights activists, the controversial issues of southern states banning open grazing, agitating to collect value added tax VAT, rather than the Nigerian government and separatist agitation in the South, may be the major factors why Northern governors want to disrespect the gentleman's agreement of returning power to the South. We're now being joined by Kaduna State Governorship aspirant, Senator Shehu Sani. Thanks for joining us, uh, Senator. Thank you for having me. All right, it is indeed a pleasure. Let's talk about this controversial issue of uh, shifting power from the north and the south. And you seem to have some concerns and you made some uh, you know, disclosure. You talked about uh, the open grazing and the VAT. How have those actually been issues regarding this uh, power sharing formula and shift to the south? Well, um, equity demands that uh, the power uh, has been in one part of the country for eight years. Uh, it should now move to the southern part of the country for eight years or the other part of the country for eight years. But this is not a, a written law but it is an idea that has stemmed out of the need to address some issues that have led us to uh storms and turbulence in our history there is no doubt about it nigeria is a multi-ethnic and multi-religious state and north south has been an issue uh for generations and it is only fair if politicians take the interests of the country at heart other than their own personal interests but from what is going on uh the ruling party has earlier made an uninformed uh on un unannounced decision of ceding power to the south but from indications of what is going on uh, that uh, idea seems to be fading on the ground that they are afraid of losing power if the opposition uh, nominates a northern candidate and they nominate a southern candidate and knowing the numerical strength of the two uh, regions it is impossible for them to win the 2023 presidency so i think uh, there are a lot of issues um the most crucial and important voter in nigeria in terms of numerical sense is the northern poor and the northern poor don't vote to address his own plight he address he votes on sentiment and also he votes in the direction of those who control him and those who control him are usually the religious authority the traditional authorities and the political class who have maintained his position as he is so the ruling party is afraid that if they seek power to the south and the opposition now nominates a northern candidate there will be so much sentiment being whipped up in the north against the southern candidate and they will hardly win that election so now the idea of also opening or throw it open for northern candidate to pick forms has now come to fund but it is from from the realistic point of view it's only possible for power to move to the south 
if all the political parties will nominate their candidates from the south. Because from my knowledge of what happens here in northern part of Nigeria, uh, the, the mass mobilization and mass uh, conscientization of people to vote is not as... Uh, it is so massive and huge. You can't compare it to what happened in the southern part of Nigeria. So I, I, I think what we what we have to understand is, especially the ruling party, uh, it does not matter whether your candidate will win or not win. But what happened is that before you talk about uh, the presidency of Nigeria, you must talk about Nigeria first. If this country crashes, uh, who is going to, where are you going to rule? There are separate agita separatist agitation in the south eastern part of Nigeria. There are crises in all, all parts of the country. And you can't just ignore it. For example, Nigeria is adopting a quota system in admission, in employment, in so many things. Taking cognizance of the fact that uh, the, the South is more educationally adva uh, advantaged than the North. So this arrangement gives the North the opportunity to also uh, enjoy presence in such agencies even without having requisite qualification. So if the South could have agreed to such idea of a quota system, then it is also the same thing with power. There is no doubt about it. The numerical strength, the population of the North is, is, is so huge that if you throw it open continuously, another will continue to be president of Nigeria. That's the fact of the matter. But if we look at Nigeria, the survival of this country, the future of this country, the unity of this country, one part of the country cannot continue to dominate the political space forever. And if you go back through our history, uh, you will see that we have passed through a period of civil war and uh, we found ourselves uh, through a period of military coup and to where we are today. So one section of the country should not dominate the political space if we want unity and peace. But the opposition party wants power by all means. They may not be obliged to respect the principle of zoning because all they want is whatever they will use, whatever implement they will use to win election, they will do it. But to me, what I think the ruling party is trying to do is that if the opposition party nominates a northern candidate, they will also nominate a northern candidate. If the opposition party nominates a southern candidate, they will do it. So it means that instead of the reverse, instead of the opposition looking towards what the ruling party will do, and the opposite now is the ruling party uh, trying to uh, reset itself according to what the opposition will do. So it's a kind of a kind cat and mouse game is a monkey game where everyone is watching everyone. All right, but let's also talk about, I mean, uh, just like you have uh, established here this morning, you've talked about uh, the possibility of power returning to the South. In your tweet as well, you talked about power will shift to the South only if the candidates of two uh, main political parties are picked from the South. Uh, mm -hmm. Senator Shosani, what part of the South are we talking about? We have the Southwest and the Southeast. Well, to be candid with you, anybody who is contesting the 2023 election, as long as he's not from the southeastern part of Nigeria, he stands in open breach of the principle of rotation of power. So when another is it's not only when another is contested that uh, he is against zoning, but even if you are from the two zones, south, south, and southwest. You are also violating the because if we are talking of rotation of power, the, the only major uh, region that has not uh, been given the opportunity to lead Nigeria is the southeastern part of Nigeria. 
for 22 years. In 1999 in Kaduna, Obona Onu emerged as the presidential candidate of the APP. He was to square off with Obasanjo only for a certain alliance that came with Alliance for Democracy, which sacrificed Obona Onu and then, uh, and then Olufala emerged. Since then, since 1999, there has never been any Igbo presidential candidate. So how can you now uh, say a certain people uh, should not be given opportunity, and then you will also raise issues when there are separatists? The separatist administration is a direct product of marginalization and injustice that is perpetrated against the people of the southeastern part of Nigeria. As far as I'm concerned, the very day a Southeasterner becomes pre pre president of Nigeria, that is the end, the formal or, or the informal end of the civil war and its own agitation for Biafra. But to me, and for now, I think whatever configuration all the two political parties are going to make, at least they shouldn't forget the Southeastern part of Nigeria. Because we can't, you are only fueling agitation each time, separate agitation, each time you marginalize uh, a people. So to me, uh, power should rotate. But even those who want power to rotate to the southern part of Nigeria, the hypocrisy is that if you ask them which part do you want in south, they will keep quiet when it comes to the issue of southeastern part of Nigeria. So as far as I, I know, that uh, the future of this country, the unity of this country, uh, is not premised on national uh, the, the national anthem or national pledge or the constitution of the country, but it can only be possible if there is observance of justice, equity, and fairness for all Nigerians. Um. Senator Shewusani, do you see um, power with all the, the political parties? I mean, you've mentioned that uh, it feels like it's a monkey game because dominant parties are not very, have not been very explicit whether or not they are going to go for the consensus, which would automatically zone to a specific region. Uh, but by all means, do you see power shifting to the southeastern region of Nigeria? Well... Uh, for now, for the fact that um, uh, the, politi the, the political, the political, those who have uh, pushed themselves forward from the southeast, you will find out that they are not doing that from the position of power. If you are a Serving governor contesting election, you are most likely to have the influence of other governors and other support groups because people gravitate towards power. And but there are good candidates from the southeast. Uh, people like Ken Namani, uh, Peter Obi, uh, who have uh, pushed themselves. Uh, I am. I am uh, also good materials. But the point is that, how do you win the primaries? That's a fact of the matter. If you look at the candidates from the PDP, uh, I am and Peter Obi, and uh, these are all former governor, these are former governor and former uh, president of the Senate. So what control do they have of delegates outside of their states? That's one issue. If you look at Ken and Namani, he is an acceptable and a credible personality. Uh, the delegates from Enugu State uh, can vote for him, but outside of Enugu, where does his strength lie? So, and if you look at the history of uh, party primaries, it's about money. Monies are being shared uh, to delegates for a certain candidate. How much? How much do those people have? So I think 
if Nigeria wants to remain united, then it should ensure that those parts of the country that have been marginalized politically are brought aboard. So the Southeast can produce a president, but the way the calculation is now, it's going to be a trillion tax. But it's not about a trillion tax. The option before us is that do we want a united and one Nigeria? Or do we simply want to continue to, to use the power of might and dominate others? So I think that's the question we need to answer. All right, uh, Senator Osani, let's still stay on um, the Southeast um, presidency in as much as you have talked about um, those who have pushed themselves forward. You mentioned Ken Namani, Peter Obi, and um, uh, former um, Senate President Anim Pais Anim. But there's always been this talk about um, the Southeast um, not speaking with one voice when it comes to what they want and them um, championing their position. Do you agree with that position? That Southeast has not been speaking with one voice. Yes, as by pushing the, uh, their agenda forward. That's by speaking with one voice in the terms of um, pushing a particular candidate forward. Well, I think it can be strategic for the Southeast to rally around one candidate in PDP and one candidate in APC. So, each candidate that comes from the Southeastern part of Nigeria is an option for a united Nigeria. And whoever is aspiring to be president of Nigeria from the Southeast believes in one Nigeria. And if he is disappointed or disgraced or marginalized, you are only giving credence to those who believe that we are not wanted in Nigeria. So as far as I am concerned, I, I believe the Southeast can be strategic in terms of rallying around uh, one of their own and then demanding that this is our own, this is our own position and we, we want your support and, and backing. So there's nothing wrong with that. But the idea of saying they are not speaking one way, which, which zone is speaking one way? In the southwestern part of Nigeria, how many countries have emerged? Junibu is there, Osibanjo is there, uh, Bakare is speaking from, Faemi is speaking from, Fayoshi is there. In the north now, look at the countries too that have emerged. So there is no there is no reason that he is speaking with one voice. Only that if you want to uh, give a dog a bad name in order to hang it. But, but, but let's also, I mean, look at it generally, the Niger that we're faced with. I mean, with our current reality, security, looking at the economy and the level of borrowing, does it really matter where the president comes from from 2023? Should we be concerned about whether the president comes from the north, south, east or west? Or should we be concerned about a president that can lead us and, you know, take us to where we ought to be, for instance? Uh, looking at the issues that we're faced with. I beg your pardon, can you repeat the question? I'm asking that 2023, should we be focused about where the president comes from, the president uh, in 2023, looking at the elections, whether that power should be shifted to the north, the south, or the east, or should we be concerned about who can solve the problems of our country? Well, it, is, uh, it can be achieved both. In all parts of the country, there are people who can solve the problem of Nigeria. And in all parts of the country, there are people who have the problems of Nigeria. And it is not when it is time to rotate power that you bring the idea of solving problems of the country. So if you want, to, if you want people who will solve the problem of the country, uh, why don't you pick them from other part of the country other than you. So it doesn't make any sense to me. People should learn to, uh, to know that we come from a turbulent and turbulent history. And the need for us to 
ensure all parts of the country are equitably represented and are also given the opportunity to leave Nigeria uh, is, is necessary. It, until the coup of 1983, uh, Alex Ekwebe is supposed to be the next president of Nigeria, who was the vice president of Shagani. But since that time, it's only the military, perhaps, of those who and Ibutu uh, Uwe, were the ones who be sent to the Igbos who, who were our vice the one that military regime. But since 1999, which kind of country is this? You, you don't want another people to produce the, the president. You want to be there forever. I am, I am not from the south. I am not from the north, uh, north central. I am from the core house of Ulani state, and I am house of Ulani. But my position is that I want Nigeria to remain united. But it is only a wishful thinking. If you think that it is only one part, now, now 23 is here. They are asking you to retain power, and you are telling people that uh, is, this, is this the person who will solve the problem? And the person in power is solve the problem of the country. So let nobody tell you anything about uh, solving the problem of the country. All right. It's time to, to, to observe the ruling party should live up to his place and, and do what he needs to do. As for opposition party, they should think about the country rather than the ambition. All right, Senator Asani, uh, let's still talk about um, separatist agitation and other agitations um, across um, the country. You know, uh, I, I listened to you, and uh, one of the things you said was that um, if there is a Southeast presidency come 2023, it will bring about uh, the way you, let me just quote you verbatim, it will bring about an informal end, you know, of the civil war. That in itself is just one thing. The Southeast and, and the IPOB and ag agitation would actually be dust. But don't you think um, it might actually spur up other sort of agitations from other um, zones of the country? Senator Sani, are you there? Oh, I think we have lost them, Senator Sani. Uh, you know, we'll try and reconnect with him. Mercy, it has actually been um, a very chatty discussion. He has raised a whole lot of, uh, you know, pertinent um, points concerning uh, the 2022 presidency, you know. But like um, Ezekiel focused, um, he talked about um, the third will, and um, it has been the focus of um, the PDP and the APC. I will also want to ask him, you know, what other uh, thing can your position do? You know, to make sure that uh, this agenda of um, rotation of presidency or southern presidency actually, you know, comes to play. Um, but, but like he's rightly mentioned, he's talked about, I mean, from uh, that part where we had him, he talked about the issue of respecting the, the principle. And that's where the... A gentleman's you know, agreement. Uh, you know, that's where the argument has always been. So it comes to a point where he's supposed to go to a certain region mm. and all of a sudden we're very concerned about uh, competence and capacity to perform. And so it shouldn't be based on where you're from. But this has been an agreement. This has been um, an observation that's been going on, a tradition that's been going on for a long time. And to say that the ruling party at the time was very responsible for, uh, you know, this principle shortly after, uh, you know, transition to democratic dispensation. Yeah. It goes for a lot of worry. It's an integrity issue. And should people trust you? Because at the end of the day, uh, you have that government had failed in different points, at different strata, you have government failing. And so government will say, we are going to do X, Y, Z, but do that lead to, um, you know, their expectation at the yeah. end of the day? It calls for a lot of, um, you know, worry and concern. But the, another question would be, uh, like he has rightly mentioned, not very clear on that, but uh, we're saying that power should shift to the south. What part of the south? Because that's also going to be a problem. So if you say, let's um, ensure that the power returns to the south, we know that we have the southwest and we have the southeast. All right. We have um, Senator Sunny back. Yeah, Senator, before we lost you, I was trying to get uh, more angles from what you had said earlier on. You said uh, if uh, there is um, a power shift to the southeast come 2023, it will bring about an informal end to the civil war. Don't you think other agitations just might spring up over time? Senator Sandy, did you hear that? The last 
that's such a bad thing. All right, let me just repeat the question. I'm sure we're having some audio interference. Uh, you talked about uh, the Southeast presidency bringing an informal end to the civil war. I was asking, yeah. that in itself is a position. Don't you think other agitation just might spring up over time? Well, what I mean by that, the civil war happened over five days. But never a day goes since when we were younger up to this time, when we become fathers and grandfathers. Every day, the fallout of that war is seen, is hard, or is felt. And there is no doubt about it. The civil war was about Southeast and the rest of Nigeria. So now, there is no better way to extinguish the fire of separatism than to prove to those from the Southeast who believe in one Nigeria that they have made the right choice. And there is no better way to extinguish the separatist agitation in the Southeastern part of Nigeria than giving the South is the opportunity to produce the leadership of the country. Because I know that uh, before Jonathan's ascension to the presidency, the agitation in the South South, especially in Nadia Delta, was louder. But since Jonathan became president, one of their own uh, was in charge and it was an opportunity for him to solve all the problems known and unknown of the Nigeria Delta. So whether he has done it or he has not, he lost the moral courage to challenge any president about their plight because their own was also there. So uh, the same thing goes with the Southeast. I believe that if we, if we just, what, what is four or eight years? Four, four and eight years is not in the life of a nation. But the justice, equity and fairness that will come out of it will last for centuries and generations. So it is my own belief that uh, doing justice is not that I am saying that I do not have a candidate from the North that I support. But what I'm saying, in fact, is that the two main parties where most likely the president will emerge should look at Nigeria and do what is right to preserve this union. And you can't preserve this country without making political reconfiguration a reset that will do justice to our unity, our survival. So all what I said is that if, if the zoning or rotation of power is necessary, but when you are rotating power, also look at the areas that have not produced. The Southwest I produce a president and a vice president. The Northwest have produced president twice and even a vice president. So certainly they are you say not East produce only a vice president but no president. But now when you look at the South and the South South has done it, has produced a president, but look at the South East, it's a peculiar case. And there are people who have all their life, if the North said they do not want, or any part of the country, they say they don't want people who support the Afroization. Then there are people who support United Nigeria. Ken Namani is one of them. Peter Obi is one of them. Obama Onu is one of them. Ayim is one of them. They have held position in Nigeria, and by their views, 
and their their their, their, their ideas have always been national. So why would you disbelieve in agitators and also disbelieve in those who believe in unity? It doesn't make sense. It means that your problem is not the position, is the ethnicity where what is, where a person comes from, and not whatever he stands for. Because once you are an Igbo, you simply uh, take on a separatist identity. And that is not what it's supposed to be. I've been reading online people that are opposed to uh, separatist organization. All right, thank you. Look you. At it now, Senator Shehu Sani, we're, we're really out of time and okay. uh, I've been trying to get your attention, but just quickly. Uh, you have mentioned two political parties, uh, the standard chance of dominating in 2023. And we have 18 registered political parties, according to INEC. Why are we very focused on just two political parties that, 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 that has a tendency of taking, I mean, producing the president for 2023? Well, I think it will simply be centered on, on money. There are people with more money in the two parties than they are in the third party. Uh, the, the next party will have been Afghan, but Afghan is only present in other parties and is nowhere in, 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 in most parts of it. They have structure, but they don't have the, 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 the influence and the following. But so I can say that the dominant political forces in Nigeria who command followership and who have the resources are in these two political parties, and that's what I'm doing. All right, thank you so much for being part of the conversation this morning. We do appreciate your time. Thank you, Pat. All right, uh, we have been speaking with the former senator of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Senator Shewzani, is also the uh, governorship aspirant for Kaduna State. All right, I will take a quick break, and when we return, um, Nigerians. Uh, are likely to start paying higher tariffs for SMS and calls as um, you know operators are thinking of increasing the tariffs over you know operational costs. In a moment, stay with us.